we said that you know we're gonna do an indoor lesson by the way if we do it in the indoor we don't have to worry about no Negro or Latino rebellious Israelite walking past talking about oh we don't want to hear all that we can take our time right. in the house so we wanted to do a lesson today mainly as a cut to you on so-called church Negroes that be in the church okay this whole understanding of judgment because um, you guys, you so when I and when, when we say Israelites, we're talking about the so-called black man, West Indian man, Haitian man, all right, Native American man, and so-called Latino Hispanic man, all right. If you when we say Latino, we're talking about the indigenous Indians that was down here when it was rape, robbed, and murdered by the so-called white man who was Esau according to the scriptures. That's right. Okay, so if you, if you are of those people, you guys make up the lost 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. So we're mainly doing this for y'all who will be in those churches because y'all have that dumb mindset through Christianity that judging is a bad thing. Or the thing is y'all don't even understand what judging is about. Okay, because you guys think that, oh, you tell somebody, oh, you shoot, or I'm like, oh, you can't judge. That doesn't mean judge. So we're going we're gonna to really title this video, The Importance of judge, Righteous Judgment. All right, and understanding Matthew's chapter 7, verse 1, because that's the main verse that you so called blacks and Hispanics turn to to say that we can't judge you, or when somebody says, Don't stop being a homosexual and stop eating pork or shrimp, you guys, oh, you can't tell me. And you guys run to that verse thinking that that means not to correct your brother or don't be your brother's keeper. So we're going to get the full understanding of righteous judgment, and then we're going to come back to Matthew 7 again. We're going to start off with that, then we're going to get the whole understanding. Matter of fact, I told the brother to start off with that, but let's get on. Um, Let's get Isaiah chapter 28, because this is how we're going to break down the scriptures. All right, because you guys in the church like to say, oh, you guys are cherry picking. No, we're not cherry picking. All right, this is how the word of the Lord is supposed to be taught in order for you to understand what the word of God is saying. All right, it's not Harry Potter where you can just read from Genesis to Revelations. Like what we always say, you might be reading something in Revelations, you got to go back to the book of um, Genesis. You might be reading something in Chronicles, you might have to jump back to Leviticus to understand what that's talking about. So the Bible all connects for you dumb, stupid blacks and Hispanics that be in that Negro church on the Sunday Baptist church talking about the Old Testament is done away with. No, it's not. All right. The whole book, we're, we're dealing with the whole book, man. So this is how the word of the Lord is supposed to be taught, though. Let's get Isaiah chapter 28 and, and verse 9. Huh? Isaiah chapter 28, verse 9. Who shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? And that's what we're trying to do for you so-called blacks and understand. We're going to give you, teach you knowledge and make you understand doctrine. What doctrine? The word of the Lord. That's right. Okay? And this right here, we're going to be reading from the 1611 King James Version Bible. The same Bible that this brother right here is reading from. All right, it has the apocrypha and also the original. Uh, everything is in this. And if you guys know anything about it, your little Roman Catholic Church took the apocrypha out of the Holy That's Bible. Right, okay, because the apocrypha is supposed to be in every single King James Version Bible, because King James translated that as well from the Hebrew um, scriptures and from the Greeks after we um, they had some of our records. All right, because some of the New Testament was written in Greek also, because you Paul and other Israelites were living amongst areas like Asia Minor. Okay. But that's a whole nother topic within itself. Come. So let's just stay focused with this right here. Let's Come. go back to this. Uh, Isaiah chapter 28, verse 9. And after that, you can jump down to verse, just jump to verse 13 after verse 9. I mean, you got to yeah, just Come. get straight to the point. Isaiah chapter 28, verse 9. Who sh whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. Come. Verse 13. But the word of the Lord was made unto precept upon precept. See? But the word of the Lord was unto them, the you so-called blacks and Hispanics, the children of Israel, precept upon precept. Precept upon precept. Line upon line. Line upon line. What is line upon line of line upon line? You might be reading something like how you so-called Christians talk about John 3.16. Well, if you go up a couple verses up before that and you read the whole thing, you would have known that he was talking about the children of Israel. God. Okay? It wasn't talking about all nations on the face of the earth. All right? That's how, that's the importance of also reading the whole chapter, not just one verse. Go on up. Line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. So that's how we're going to break it down. Line upon line, here a little and there a little. So we're going to start, we're going to be going and showing you different examples in the scriptures and other parts of the Bible that did what righteous judgment is. All right, let's get on Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 8. You can drop that real quick. Let's get Nehemiah chapter 8, <laughs> verse 8. Come. You know, just getting these scriptures just to warm it up so you guys can understand where we're coming from. And then you blacks and Hispanics out there, if you're watching this video, you shouldn't be mocking. What you should be doing is have a pen and paper 
far out to study, like with the it says, those Jews in, uh, what's it called, in Thessalonica, they studied to see if those things were true. So instead of talking your damn bullshit, you need to pull out a pen and paper and start um, and start following along, and you will see who's a real, who's telling the truth or who's telling a lie. All right. So let's get let's get Nehemiah chapter eight verse eight. Huh? Nehemiah chapter eight verse eight. So that so they read in the book in the law of the Most High distinct, distinctly. And gave sense and caused them to understand the reading. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to read these things precept upon precept, distinctively, give you the sense, the understanding, and cause you to get the full understanding. That's how we're always going to do our videos. So if you don't understand that, just turn off the video now. There's a video in for you. Okay. All right? But if you could understand those scriptures, then let's keep on going. Let's get let's get Matthew chapter 7, verse 1. Let's get straight into it. Okay. Now let's get the verse that they always like to use. They like to use Matthew chapter 7. 7 verse 1 to say that now I could be a damn homosexual and a lesbian and I get to do whatever I want because all through grace and I get, and you can't even judge me. And this is just pure wickedness, man. So basically what you're saying that Christ came so you could act a damn fool. That's what you're basically saying. That doesn't make no sense. That doesn't make any sense. I thought Christ came to abolish sin. And sin, according to the scripture, is when you break the law, statutes, and commandments. All right, so let's get... um. Let's get Matthew chapter 7. Just read verse 1. Because really the last, the next four verses it, it explains itself. But we're going we to deal with it. We're going to go more in depth on, on it. So we can fully put the nails in the coffin for, for you dumb so-called Negroes and Latinos that be in these dumb um, Christianity churches and Islam and all these other um, religions that read the word, that use the, um, the Lord's book, but then twist it all up. You guys are the ones that's twisting it. That's right. All right. So let's get Matthew 7 and 1. Huh? Matthew chapter 7 verse 1. Go on, huh? Judge not that ye be not judged. So they read that. They said that, oh, that means you can't judge nobody. So that when, when you see your neighbor going off and committing sin according to the scriptures, don't say nothing. That Just let them do whatever they want to do. All right? So so they said that she, that's, that's Christ's way of saying that we, you're not supposed to judge. Really? Really? So Christ, that, that's what that means? Christ said, don't judge? Well, let's get, let, drop that. Let's get John chapter 7, verse 24. Because now, if you're going to read that and say that Christ said that we can't judge, then explain what he's saying in John the 7th chapter and the 24th verse. Come on. Let's read this up. John chapter 7 verse 24. Go on now. Judge not according to the appearance. Christ says don't judge according to appearance. Meaning if a man's walking down the street and he got some bony clothes on or he looks a certain way, don't judge him straight up according to how he looks. But go on. But judge righteous judgment. But wait, I thought one minute it was saying judge not that he be judged. But then next he's saying judge righteous judgment. So that goes to show that you don't understand what you're talking about. Because one minute, if you were to say that Matthew 7 and 1 really meant that, then you're trying to say that Christ was an oxymoron. We know the Lord wasn't, um, he didn't, we wasn't double-minded. It's you Negroes that are double-minded don't understand the scriptures. He said, judge ye righteous judgment. Now, before, let's go into it now. What is righteousness according to the Bible? All right, what, what makes somebody righteous? Let's get Deuteronomy. Let's get the basics on you. Because this is more like a milk topic, man. Let's get Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 25. What is righteous judgment? Because Christ said, judge ye righteous judgment. So let's first find out what righteousness is first. All right, so let's get that up. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 25. And it, shall, and it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments. If we observe to do all these commandments. Before the Lord our God as he hath commanded us. So the Lord said if we do these commandments that he commanded us through Moses, the, the, the law, statutes, and commandments through from Genesis to do the book of Deuteronomy, that is our righteousness. Our meaning us as the nation of Israel because we're in covenant with our God. And the covenant was backed up by the law. So if you're an Israelite, you better be doing what your God said to do, man. Right. All right? So he's saying... Our righteousness, that, that might not be good enough. Let's get Psalms 119 and 172. Let's further prove what righteousness is. Then after this, we're going to understand what righteous judgment is. All right? Let's get um, Psalms 119 and 172. Huh? Psalms chapter 119, verse 172. Go on. My tongue shall speak of thy word. For all of thy commandments are righteousness. You see that? The psalm said all the commandments of the Lord is, is righteousness. So if Christ said, judge ye right, judge righteous judgment, what do you think he's talking about? God. You judge according to the law. What? What? What's that, you dumb niggas? Oh, that, that's not what it's talking about? Then let's get um, Deuteronomy. 
Let's get Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 1. Let's prove that righteous judgment is according to the law. Okay? Because if you're going to judge your neighbor, you're supposed to judge them according to the law, statutes, and commandments of our God. Come. And not on your own mind or something that's not pertaining to the word of the law. Like a lot of you camps out there. Oh, man. All right? A lot of you camps judge men that for things that are not even in the scriptures, man. Come, man. All right? You guys are just pathetic, man. And the most high sees all. And I'm not even just talking about one specific camp because I'm pretty sure most of you guys are probably thinking about what type of camp we're talking about. Come. We're talking about almost all you Israel like camps out there. That's right. I know we're not saying that all these Israelite camps are off. We're just saying that there's a large majority in these camps, of uh, men in these camps, that act like this shit don't stand, man. Uh -huh. Judging men for this and that that is not even according to the scriptures, but they themselves are committing adultery and stealing in the, and, and stealing in the congregation and doing all type of nonsense behind closed doors. Uh -huh. But then persecuting brothers because they don't they don't want to teach on a Saturday like you. If a brother wants to go teach on a Sunday or a Monday, that's that brother's choice, man. You dumb, silly men out there. Where's the commandment that says, Thou shalt teach on the white man Saturday every single week? Hmm. If a man wants to teach on a, on a, uh, on, on a Sunday, or if he, uh, hey, if he's in a situation, I just, I lost a job, now I got another job, my schedule's all mixed up. This brother, he, yeah, we work. Okay, this brother here works. Done. Okay, so I mean, we we got all we got hell in our own personal lives that we get just because a man doesn't do what what you said to do at that particular time. Does that make that man wicked, man? All right, you men are going to hell off judging you, and then, and you blacks and Hispanics that be in these church, y'all y'all don't even know what the hell this is talking about. Y'all completely lost. So when we when we doing this, this is not an attack on any particular camp. This is for all Israel, man. If you were black, Latino, and a Native American watching this video, this video is to edify you according to the scriptures. If you don't care, just turn the video off, man. Come. You ain't gotta watch us. Alright? So let's get um Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 1. Now we're gonna we just read in the scriptures that um righteousness is when you keep the law. So now we're gonna find out what righteous judgment is, like what Yahweh Shah told us in the book of John, the seventh chapter and the twenty-fourth verse. Alright, let's go. Right. Deuteronomy chapter four, verse one. Now therefore hearken, O Israel, unto the statutes and unto the judgments which I teach you, for to do them. That ye may live and go and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers giveth you. And when it says the land, I ain't talking about no mama Africa. For you little um, African um, Negroes out there. Oh, oh, Africa. We got to go back to Africa. Af Africa is not our homeland. Them Africans are not our friends. All right, I got a book over here right in the closet with the with them get your little um Kemet and little um Egypt friends uh -huh. hanging you and chopping your hands off while you was out there in Africa. So what was all that African brotherly love then? Uh -huh. Power to the people, right? Okay, and it was to show you that it, it, when it says the land, it was talking about the land that was known as Canaan, which th today what we call the land of Israel. Uh -huh. That's our land. When Yahweh Bar Hashem Yahweh Shev, through the Spirit brings his angels and destroy America, because America's going to be destroyed. All right, that's another thing that y'all don't even know about. The Lord is going to wipe this place out with thermonuclear missiles. And that's why we got to make these videos, because if you guys turn the news right now, the clock is winding out now, man. That's Russia's about to take over Ukraine, the whole of Ukraine, and that's the gateway to open to the land of Israel, man. And it already prophesied that the Russians was going to come into the land in the last days and blow them fake Jews out of our land. The big old homosexual Tel Aviv, Curl, Abraham Lincoln, had those stupid um, rats out of our land, man. They had some. The, they had, when they were celebrating the perim, they was dressed up like the Ku Klux Klan, making fun of us, and they in our land. And then you got dumb men in Israel talking about we need to go save these damn Gentiles, man. We need to be saved from the Gentiles. The Gentiles need a foot in their damn ass, and they need a thousand years of captivity and learning these statutes and commandments. And that Edom, the whole race of Edom, needs to be wiped out in order for peace to be on this earth, man. Right. All right, but if you guys talk about all the oh, we gotta have this, this, whatever, then this, man, this problem, the problems on earth will never be solved because y'all not doing what our God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob said to do. Come. The scriptures say, according to Ecclesiastes chapter 12, the whole duty of man, not even if you're an Israelite, if you're on this earth, you're supposed to be doing what the God of Abraham, Isaac, right. ain't, Israel ain't doing what their God say to do, and the Gentiles ain't doing what our God say to do. They ain't being our servants and slaves. They're not being submissive to us. They're not being respected. They're not respecting us. We be on our job. They be making fun of how all oh, the Negroes can't be Jews and all that. Come, come man. 
And you guys right here talking about we supposed to be reaching out to these Gentiles. And these Gentiles don't even reach out for us. And we in our captivity, they in our land, acting a damn fool in the Lord's land. Basically, just basically saying a big F you to the most high. And when the most high destroyed this damn place called America and fake Jews, I'm, I'm, we're supposed to feel bad for them? So man, man, they up. need to hurry up with their Come. missiles, man. And get this thing popping so we can get out of here, man. Come. But <laughs> that's that. <laughs> We, we, you know, we ain't trying to go on with that, but you know, that's just the reality of things, man. All right, but back to read Deuteronomy um, 4 and 1 again, and then after that, after you read the first verse, jump down to the sixth verse, down to the eighth verse. Come. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 1. Now, therefore, hearken, O Israel, unto the statutes and unto the judgments which I teach you, for to do them that ye may live and go and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers giveth you. Verse 6. Come. Keep therefore and do them. For this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations. The Lord said that these commandments is our wisdom and understanding in sight of the nations. So when the scriptures did not, the scriptures say, um, wisdom and knowledge shall be disability at that time. Uh -huh. So what are you supposed to be doing in the last days? Keeping the commandments and watching these prophecies, man. That's the only thing us as Israelites should be entertained and doing now, man. All this other side nonsense in America, all the award show, and all that's just there just to throw you all off. Yeah. World star hip hop, I mean all these drugs, that the, whose car is big, that's, who gives a damn? Hey, we ain't got time for that shit no more, man. Entertainment, man. Yeah, we ain't got time for the entertainment world. The only thing we got to do now is come back to the most high and hope that he got mercy on us in this place before this place gets yeah. destroyed. That's the only point that we at right now. Because these Gentiles, they're only talking about war. If I turn the news right now, it's Putin, 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 Ukraine, North Korea. North Korea made another threat against America today, saying that they was going to make another nuclear test. And it's all about nuclear missiles. Because we know that according to the prophecies, according to Isaiah, the Lord said he created the smith. The Lord created those missiles. These yeah. nations have these missiles for a reason to destroy Babylon, which is America, man. And they're going to do it, man. They're going to do it. It's just a matter of time now. Come. In the meantime, us as a nation, we need to start getting our act together, man. Come. We need to start understanding what, how, how, we gonna have, how we're pleasing our God. Like when you read Malachi, the fourth chapter, it says, Behold, the days come like a, 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 a burning fire, as a burn shall burn as an oven. But then when you jump to verse four, what are you telling Israel? Remember the laws. Because that's, right. that's what you're supposed to be doing. The hell, the hell with what America doing, white man and all that. They getting all caught up with this um, um, coach player talking all this stuff about he don't want, oh, the, oh look at him. The white man been saying that for the past 500 years, man. Ain't nothing new, man. Ain't nothing new, man. What you think? The niggas talking about they want to form their own basketball league and all the white man just blow that up just like how he blew up on Black Wall Street. Come on. He'll just come and fuck it up. You can't have peace with this guy around, man. That this damn red piece of garbage on the loose, man. Right. The Bible called him the red dragon. That's and it right. said that he was sent to persecute the woman, man. The woman is us, the nation of Israel. So these, this, this America is set up to destroy us, man. You blacks and Spanish gotta get your mind out of these damn religions and all this crap. White G Christ. Yeah, y'all still think Christ is a so-called white man, man. 2014, niggas still walking around, and here it is in the Holy Bible say he got burnt brass skin, man. Still talking about he pale and got blue eyes and blonde hair. R ridiculous, man. And y'all needed that little good look, because even though we're going to get right back in the scriptures, y'all need to hear that for a little while. We got to get that off our chest, man, because you niggas and Latinos are just playing around in these last days, man. My bad. Uh, verse 6, though. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 6. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 6. Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall hear all these statutes, and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. And they're going to be saying that in the kingdom. Because when you read Isaiah, the this, uh, this second chapter, it says that all nations are going to come up to Jerusalem. What? To hear the word and the law of the, of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. See, right? Excuse me. Right now, these Gentiles, they talking all type of shit against the Bible. The Bible ain't real. You guys ain't the Jews. But when Yahweh shall come back and set judgment up on this earth, right. they're going to become running to us, man. Because right. Jerusalem's going to be the only established place. All these kingdoms on the face of the earth are going to be looking like, like a desert, man. You going to go to England, all that beautiful, that, the nuclear missiles done wiped out all that out. Huh. You're going to be looking at Washington, D.C., wiped out. Russia, Moscow, wiped out. 
They go, the only place that's going to be established and have water coming from the land and that they're going to have to come and submit and, and have to get life from is Jerusalem. And if they come into Jerusalem, they're going to have to bow down to the people, our God and our king, which is Christ, the so-called black man with woolly hair, going to be standing and judging the nations like what it says in Isaiah, the second chapter. And be in order. Right? And be in oh, order. Man. And like what the scriptures say, they're going to beat their plowshare, uh, their, um, their swords into plowshares, meaning we're going to put you to work. You're going to build up them walls of Jerusalem. That's your payback while we was in our captivity right now catching hell. And you're not helping us. Just like well, when we get in our captivity, you're going to be you're going to be forced to work for us. Just like how we got to be forced. Monday come, we got to go work for you damn devils again. Get a little stupid paycheck at the end of the week. Like, oh, nigga, you happy that you get a little... No, I ain't happy. I'm going to be happy until your blood is, is, is all over the ground and I'm back in my land and Christ deliver us out of your hands. That's, That's when right. you're going to be happy. That's right, man. You damn white Come. folks and you damn niggas is put to damn death, man. And America is destroyed. Verse, uh, verse 7, now. Verse 7. For what nation is there so great who have God so nigh unto them? And our nation has God onto us. Okay, so we got the Most High with us. Go on. As the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon Him, it's like it, that we call upon Him for. And what nation is there so great that has statutes and judgment so righteous and as all this law which I said before you this day? So it goes to show you that the righteous judgment comes from the law. So when Christ said, execute ye righteous judgment, he's talking about execute judgment according to the law. Right. And you got to ask yourself this. You can't say that the Most High hates judgment because right here in Isaiah chapter um, 61 verse, um, verse 8, the Lord said, for I the Lord love judgment. Then you go jump go to Isaiah chapter um, what's it called 56 verse 1. The Lord is telling us to execute judgment. Then you go to Matthew chapter 22, verse 22. Christ is saying to keep the law, have mercy, and what? Execute yeah. judgment. Huh. So what the judgment is what? According to the law. You're supposed to show your neighbor. That's how the word further spreads. By, by setting up correct judgment. If somebody's going off according to the law, say they're eating shrimp. And you tell them to stop eating shrimp. This is the scripture showing you they stop eating shrimp. The next person that they bump into in Israel is eating shrimp. They will edify that person. And if the person don't want to listen, then they're just a wicked person. And most I can kill him on the day of the law. Come. But that's righteous judgment. So telling your brother that he's going off according to the scriptures, there's nothing wrong with that. When we stand up on those corners, we got every single right to tell you dumb niggas that's to come right. back to the most high. And, we, and the most high ain't mad at us for that, man. It's our job, man. That's our job. Come. Okay, and if you love God, you'll be doing the same exact thing too. Let me matter of fact, read on verse 8 again real quick, huh? Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 8. And what nation is there so great that have statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law which I set before you this day? Yeah, see, the nations are going to look at us and be like, these nations are, 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 are righteous people because they execute, did not, um, Paul said, know ye not that the saints shall judge the world? Who, who's the world? It tells you that the world is referring to the nations in Isaiah, the second chapter. So we're going to be judging the nations. How? According to the laws. So if we're going to be judging the nations, we are, ourselves as a nation have to get our act together before we can start telling the nations what to do. Come. So here it is. I can't tell my own brother in Israel that he's going off. But then when Christ comes back, we're going to be telling the East Indian man. No, we got to at first. That's why we got to do to execute judgment first as a nation. Then when we get our act together, when Christ comes back, sets up the 144, the elect, and we all got the order. Then we can tell the nations what to do. But right now, we can't even tell the nations what to do because our own nation, we acting like a bunch of damn fools with inside the nation. So, but World Star, man. Yeah, World Star, man. It's not but a bunch of nonsense, man. Shit, man. World Star, all this nonsense, man. Um, yeah, man. <laughs> well, I I'm trying to think about this. There's other nigga sites out oh, there, yeah, man. There's no. nigga sites that we probably never even heard of, man. Outside of that, that, that crap, man. All right, so let's get um, let's show more proof that is that judging is according to the law. Let's get Leviticus chapter uh, 19 verses 1 to 2, and you can jump down to verses 15 to 18. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto all the congregation of the children of Israel. Once again, this is, who, this is who the message is for, the children of Israel. Go on. And say unto them, Ye shall be holy, 
For I, the Lord your God, am holy. So the Lord's saying that in order for us, if we're, since we're in covenant with Him, we need to be on his, uh, on his type of level, basically on the spiritual level. The Most High have He has an order in the heavens. He gave His laws to us. So we're if we're going to be His people, we ought to do the things that he, that He does. Come, okay. If the Most High says that He rested on the seventh day, we as a nation rest on the seventh day. Okay, the most I say he does he the, he made the swine to be unclean. We as a nation don't eat the swine. If the most I says dressing up like a damn transsexual is wrong, and he said that that's the way that um, I set it up that if a man does that, he, that's an abomination. Us as a nation, we're not supposed to be doing it. Be ye holy, for the Lord is holy. All right, let's jump down to verse uh, fifteen. Huh? Verse fifteen: You shall do no unrighteousness in judgment. Thou shalt not respect the person of the poor. No honor the person of the mighty. And you realize he says, you shall do no unrighteousness in judgment. Uh -huh. Did not Christ say, execute ye righteous judgment? Basically, Christ was just quoting the law. <laughs> All right, go on now. Ye shall do no unrighteousness in judgment. Thou shalt not respect the person of the poor, nor honor the person of the mighty, but in righteousness shall that judge thy neighbor. That's right. According to righteousness, we already read what righteousness is. The commandments. So you judge your neighbor according to the commandments. Is there more? Yeah. Um, Down to verse 8? Yeah. Matter of fact, I, I just finished off to 18. Uh, um, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Verse 18. Salah. Yeah, that's right. Salah. Uh, Thou shalt not, this is like, thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. Thou shalt not love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. That was it. That's right. So when you realize, um, reverse uh, 17 and 18 again. Yeah. Um, you know what? Matter of fact, I'm going to start with 15 and just. Yeah, yeah, just read Yeah, okay. All right. Uh, verse 15. You shall do no righteousness in judgment. Thou shalt not respect the person of the poor, nor honor the person of the mighty. But in righteousness, thou shalt judge thy neighbor. According to the commandments, thou shalt not go up and down as a talebearer among thy people, neither, neither shalt thou stand against the blood of thy neighbor. I am the Lord. Go on. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. But go on. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. What is sin? First John chapter 3 verse 4. Huh. So if you see your neighbor going off according to the commandments, it's your job according to the law to judge them. That's what that means. That's all that meant. The old prophets did that. Huh. When you think the prophets Let's get to Rock chapter 46, verses um 13 to uh 14. And we haven't forgot about Matthew's the seventh chapter. We're coming back to that later on. But we just first understand what righteous judgment is first. Go on up. Ecclesiasticus chapter 14, verse 13. Um, be 46. 40, yes, I'm slacking. 46, verse 13. Go on up. Samuel the prophet of the Lord, beloved of his Lord. Establish a kingdom and an anointing princes over his people. Samuel was a prophet in the Old Testament because around the time Israel didn't have a king. So Samuel was like the main prophet. He was like the main um, messenger that the Most High was using to edify. And then around that time you had Saul come up, uh, which was really like our second king. Because really, if you according to the scriptures, our first king was uh, Masha, which is which we know today as Moses. All right, he was our first king. But Saul being our second king around that time, we didn't have a king ever since um, the time of Moses. So, you know, we was walking around kingless. So Samuel was the one that was executing judgment that the Lord was using to um, correct and edify Israel. All right, go on. Right. Ecclesiastes chapter 46, verse 13. Go on. Samuel, the prophet of the Lord, beloved of his, of his Lord, established a kingdom and anointed princes over his people. By the law of the Lord, he judged the congregation. By the law of the Lord, he judged the congregation. Go on. And the Lord had respect unto Jacob. And the Lord had respect unto Jacob because we was executing and doing and, and correcting one another, man. Come. And the Lord liked that, man. He didn't say, oh, you're not supposed to be judging. He didn't say, oh, 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 Samuel, I'm mad with you because thou are judging people. No, he said that he said that that's a good thing, man, and that's how all the nation was edified and kept us from doing um uh, wrong, man. All right, so let's get another example. Let's get the famous scripture. Let's get Isaiah chapter fifty-eight, verse one. It's the same exact thing. <coughs> showing you judge, judging is show a judgment according to the Bible. If you judge righteous judgment is showing you your neighbor, your fellow Israelite, where they're going off according to the law. That's righteous judgment, man. 
All right, so let's get Isaiah chapter 58, verse 1. Uh, Isaiah chapter 58, verse 1. Cry aloud, spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgression, and the house of Jacob their sins. Hey, that's another form of judgment. Let's get Micah chapter 3, verse 8. Matter of fact, I got another one in um, I think Ezekiel after that too, when you get that too. Uh, uh, Alright, just showing you that all the prophets judge. So when you say, was Samuel wicked? Was Isaiah wicked? Was Ezekiel wicked? Was Christ wicked? Because Christ was telling the Pharisees when they, he was judging them. So was he wrong? Oh, he, and, and the Pharisees was trying to pull that crap. Oh, you can't tell us what to do. And he was saying, look, if you don't judge according to the commandments, you can do it. You can do it. I, can, I have every single right that should tell you where you're going off, right. man. All right. So let's get on. Um, Micah. Yeah, Micah uh, 3 and 8. It goes to show you that when you show somebody their transgressions or where they're going off, that's a form of righteous judgment. Let's get that up. Micah chapter 3, verse 8. But truly I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. And of judgment. And, and of what? And of judgment. And of judgment. This is Micah. So let's see if Micah's wicked now. Go on now. And of might to declare unto Jacob his transgression and to Israel his sin. So that's what judging is. He said, I'm full of judgment. I'm, I'm, I'm about to start judging some wicked niggas right now. Come on, bro. What do you think Nehemiah was doing when he was beating ne Negroes up the head? When he was following after them Gentile women and, and going after that guy. Come. That was righteous judgment. Nehemiah, if we didn't have a man like Nehemiah, our nation would have been going to hell off, man. Maccabees, Judas Maccabees, these guys, these guys was executing judgment. Moses was executed when we was in the wilderness when the Sabbath was coming in and the people was like playing what did Moses Moses said get in the house for the Lord that's righteous judgment and you and you're not suffering sin upon your neighbor. Come on. You're, you're helping your neighbor um escape wrath that way, man. Whether they hearken or not. Because you got you can always have a rebellious nigga in Israel be like, nigga, I don't but he well, you can leave him on the wayside. Come. On. Like when Yahweh Shai said, don't cash your swirls before that piece of swine. Let that nigga go. But as far as somebody who really wants to try, and they trying to get the understanding, they're going off. Yeah, and you show them where they're off. Yeah, the right, that's the right thing to do. Let's get um, a let's get Ezekiel. Let, let's see if was the let's see if the Lord was wrong for saying this. Let's get Ezekiel chapter uh, twenty verse two. Ezekiel chapter 20 verse 2 Yeah, come on. Uh, Then came the word of the Lord unto me Saying, Son of man Speak unto the elders of Israel And say unto them Thus said the Lord God Are ye come to inquire of me? As I live, said the Lord God I will not be inquired of by you This yeah, So this is the Lord speaking to the prophet Ezekiel Verse 4 huh? Will thou judge them, son of man? Wait, he said what, You gonna judge? You gonna Come on now You're supposed to be doing your job Will thou judge them? Go on. Will thou judge men, son of man? Will thou judge them? Cause them to know the abominations of their fathers. That's judging. Come. To show somebody where they're going off, man. That's a good thing. That's why we call this um, lesson the importance of righteous, righteous judgment. Come, bro. Because if we're not doing this, then then basically everything is haywire, man. And if you don't understand that, then you're just a damn fool, man. Come. I mean, how could you not see that showing somebody where they're going off is a good thing and, and, and not a bad thing? Only a wicked person would say that when you correct them, that's, oh, I don't want to hear. Only you got to be wicked. And most of you blacks and Hispanics in these churches are oh, wicked. Come on. That's how come when we be on the, every single weekend, when we be down there in that dumb, stupid um, bus stop down there in Miami, we trying to talk to you blacks and Hispanics. Y'all be the main ones that yelling at, we had the, got the black woman, or she the black woman with a big mouth walking past. You ain't teaching the word of God, right? But then, yet when we, she got pants on and she eating, but her breast smells like freaking bacon. And she, she, she got a child, no baby daddy, wrong, but going to try to tell us Come. that we, we ain't got, we don't know the Most High. But then when we try to tell her that she's going off, she out of here. But that's why you're gonna get to get destroyed with the so-called white man, your but, little buddy, buddy. Because what though? That's why she's in a condition. She's that's right why she's so in now, a damn condition now. And I hearken unto the word of the Most High, man. <laughs> that's right, oh, man. That's right, man. Most I put you Negroes where the hell y'all belong God, sometimes, man. man. I don't be feeling bad for a lot of you Negroes when y'all be getting beat upside the head by the police and getting shot up and all that type of stuff. We, I'd be glad. That's one less set of rebellious niggas that's not listening to the word of the Lord that we got to deal with. 
All right. So let's get another example. Um, let's get some example. Get uh, Ezekiel eighteen. Yeah, matter of fact, yeah, get that real quick. Whatever, whatever. Come. Uh, Ezekiel chapter eighteen, verse twenty-four. Come. But when the righteous turn away from his righteousness and commit iniquity and doth according to all the abominations that the wicked man, uh, the the wicked man doth, shall he live? All his righteousness shall have shall that he have done shall not be mentioned. In his trespass he have trespassed. And his sin that he has sinned, and them shall he die. Yeah, and that's that's what's gonna happen to you blacks and Hispanics. Come. When we try to tell you right from wrong, and you tell them I don't wanna hear that, you are gonna die. And most likely, if it's not by martial law or by some stupid clans, man, because we in the south, we in the depths of the south, some clan all around here. But um, as for you, some clan comes snatch you up, some neo-Nazi group, and if not, the Lord is reserving you for one of Vladimir's um um Vladimir Putin's specialized missiles uh, that could um, come from Moscow straight into the heart of America in less than 25 minutes, man, to burn your ass up to one one million degrees Fahrenheit, because that's the judgment that you get that's for not worshiping the Lord. All right. What you got? Um, yeah. Matter of fact, let's get some more examples. Let's just prove that that the Lord is with judging according to the law. Let's get Deuteronomy chapter one, verses sixteen to eighteen. All right. We're, pr we're proving every single thing according to the scriptures. Deuteronomy chapter one, verse sixteen. And I and I charge your judges. And, what, and he, the Lord said, I He set up judges. <laughs> so if that was so wrong, why is God setting up judges in Israel if we uh -huh. can't judge? You guys say judge not that ye be judged. Uh -huh. So why is God setting up all this judgment? <laughs> Go on now. Deuteronomy chapter one verse sixteen. And I and I charge your judges at that time, saying, Hear the causes between your brethren and judge righteously between every man and his brother. And he said judge righteously between every man and his brother. It, that's no different from what Christ was telling us in the New Testament. Come. Show you that the Old Testament and the New Testament and Christ was in the Old Testament and the New Testament. It's the same thing, man. Come. Christ was telling us that we need to start executing judgment according to the law. Because at that time, you had the scribes and the Pharisees. They had all these little traditions and all that nonsense. And none of that was according to the scriptures. But they was judging. Remember that one time when Yahweh Shah went to that one feast and he didn't wash his hands? Yeah. And the Pharisees was looking at him like he was wicked. Where is that in the law that thou shalt wash thy hands before thy eat? I mean, that's. I mean, even though that could be in today's world, that'd be good hygiene because everything is the dirty. But at, at that time, I mean, if you just picked up a piece of fish, that's not a sin, man. Yeah. You can't judge a man. That's not. No, there's nowhere in the commandments. Like when the scriptures say where, no, where there's no law, there's no transgression, man. So like Christ was like, you can't tell me what to do, but you guys are is coming up with traditions what the Lord said not to do. Christ could have the right to tell them that they was wrong because they wasn't doing what the scriptures were saying to do. Like example, uh, yeah, go on. tomorrow, Mother's Day. <coughs> oh, shoot. <coughs> yeah. That damn Mother's Day. <laughs> Mother's, Mother's Day, yeah. it, here it is. Your mother, you guys treated your mother like shit the whole damn year, but then all of a sudden one day you damn niggas act like you love your mom so much. Mm -hmm. Then you know how you hear that dumb Tupac song, Dear Mama, and them damn boys to men on uh, food to my soul and love and all that bullshit, which is another form of um, queen of heaven worship, uh -huh. man. Because why you need one day when the scriptures already said thou shalt honor thy father and thy mother? That should be an everyday process. Why do I need one day just to acknowledge her when I should have been doing it the day before that? Come. Why Father's Day? Why I need one day just to acknowledge my father when you was supposed to be doing that all year round? Tradition of men. Tradition of men. And if Christ was here, he would cut he would cuss all you niggas out for doing that. Come, bro. But now the men of the Lord here, now, yeah, the Lord got set up his men to do that for, um, for him. All right? And when, when Christ comes back, he'll just deal with y'all on a physical level. Come. All right, so go on now. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 16. And I charge your judges at that time, saying, Hear the causes between your brethren, and judge righteously between every man and his brother, go on. and the stranger that is with him. But go on. Ye shall not respect persons in judgment, but ye shall hear the small as well as the great, Ye, you shall not be afraid of the face of men, for the judgment is God's, and the cause that is too hard for you, bring it, bring it unto me, and I will hear it. What, what does it mean the judgment of, is God's? This right here. Come. And how, how would they be judging according to this? 
So when you judging somebody, I'm not judging you according to my. If, if I tell somebody that they not, they they should just keep the Sabbath, something basic like that. The Sabbath is not that Sunday crap. And somebody get mad. Well, they don't tell me what to do. Then according to the scriptures, I got a right to tell you that. But if you don't want to listen, that's not, that's up to you. But the point is, there's nothing wrong in that. That's the correct thing to be doing. That's right. Especially in these last days, well, when you got all these doctrines and all these lies that we didn't talk from, uh, been taught from the so-called white men and Gentiles, man, we need a whole bunch of judgment to go out because a lot of you Negroes still bring that crap into our nation. Come. Especially you black women with this whole getting married with the ring. Yeah, right. Where is that in the scriptures? Come. And then when you tell the black woman you don't want to do it the white man way, she judging you like like you the wicked nigga. Come. But the, the Lord never told us as Israelite men to go put a ring on it, man. Right, man. That's something that we learn from the Gentiles. You can't judge me according to that. That's why come we get that's why men of the Lord be blasting you so-called black women, man. But you black women, man, you black women gonna get a reality check real soon in these last days. Come, man. And it's gonna be with through death and destruction, man. That's right. The most I gonna freaking blow you black women out of existence. All that damn twerking, that big mouth, them tight jeans, your weave, all them shirt with your teeth titties popping all that. The most I gonna blow you out of existence right along right. with America with that nonsense, man. Right. Because that nonsense will not be brought to Mount Zion. Man, apple bottom jeans will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. That's right, bro. Okay, twerking will not enter into Jerusalem. And all you dumb other niggas out there with the Egypt and that half stepping black power spirit, or all y'all, man, that's talking about the, the Old Testament Israelites talking about Christ don't exist, none of y'all are gonna make it into the land of Israel, man. Right. And not unless you get your act together, man. Come. And I chat, and you Old Testament niggas, yeah, I, I'm, yeah. Cause there's tons of scriptures that cut you proving that Christ is in the Old Testament. That's right. I know some of y'all gonna see the video. Oh, this guy wicked. Yeah, what? But come bring it, so we can light you up on the comment board. That's right. All right. So go on, Doc. Verse 18. And I commanded you at that time all the things which ye should do. That's right. So the Lord told us to to execute judgment. Let's get another one. Let's get Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 18. All right, and we're going then we're gonna get some scripture showing you that judgment is a good thing with the law. <laughs> Deuteronomy chapter sixteen, verse eighteen: Judges and officers shall thou make thee in all thy gates. The Lord say, when we get into the land of Israel, we're gonna set up judges and office and what? Officers and officers in our land. Go on. Judges and officers shall thou make thee in all thy gates, which the Lord thy God giveth thee throughout thy tribes. And they and they that and they shall judge the people with just judgment. That's right, and then mainly that goes for the Levites, like this brother right here. Uh -huh. He would have he would have been one of those that was scattered throughout Israel to uh -huh. tell Israel because Levi was spread out through um oh, through, throughout all the tribes and could correct Israel when he was going off. And what would Levi come to you with? Levi would have judged you according to this. If you had a problem going to the Levites back then, the Levites would have read the law and show you where he was going off. Yeah. You back then go to the Levites and talk about when the Levites was telling you wrong. You you say some shit like, oh, I don't want to hear that. Boy, you would have boy, you would have got your ass kicked or put to death in Israel. Depends on what the sin was. Yeah. All right. If you was committing adultery and the Levite told you that was off and you told me I'm gonna do whatever, you would have got straight up put to death back right. in Israel, man. That's right. It wasn't even no grace at that time. So you, your head would have been clean off. You and, got, that's and, and that's order. Right and there. that's order. That's order. Anyway, man, let's get on um, Psalms. Let's prove that judgment is good. Then we're going to come back to um, Matthew 7 chapter. Let's get Psalms 37 and verse 30. Let's prove that judgment is a good thing to the most high. Judge 30, uh, uh, Psalms 37 and 30. Uh, Psalms chapter 37, verse 30. The mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom. The, what, the mouth of the righteous will make a man righteous. We already went through what righteousness says, keeping the commandments. So this is a man that's doing what the commandments said. It's speaking of wisdom. We already read what our wisdom is in Deuteronomy. Come. It says that these laws and these commandments shall be our wisdom in the sight of the nations. Come. So go on up. Psalm chapter 37 and verse 30. The mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom. Yeah. And his tongue talketh of judgment. And his tongue talketh of judgment. So they didn't say that the man was wicked for judging. It was a good thing. It's a good thing to show um, where your, where your, your neighbor where they're going off. Yeah. Let's get another example. Let's get Psalms 106 verse 3. And then we're going to go back to your little famous Matthew 7 and 1. We're going to wrap it up. That's it. 
All right, go on now. Psalm chapter 1 to 6, verse 3. Blessed are they that keep judgment, and he that doeth righteousness at all times. <laughs> <laughs> But we can't judge. Judging is so bad. What is it about those again? Huh? Bless are they that keep judgment. Bless are they that keep judgment. Meaning good. May those, may those men prosper. Go on. And he that doeth righteousness. Righteousness. Keeping the commandments. At all times. At all times. So the Bible didn't say that there was something wrong with judgment. The Lord said if you execute in judgment, the righteous judgment, blessed are you. He didn't say, oh, cursed are you, you're, you're, you're wicked, you're going to, the, 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 to hell. No. Like what they tell you in the damn black nigga church. You won't burn up in hell forever. Then, then, then they're going to talk about how God's so merciful, but then yet he's going to send you to a place called hell and you're going to burn forever. That don't sound too merciful to me. No. So that goes to show there ain't no such thing as a place called hell. But that's another topic within itself or that. Because, huh. I mean, to go into that, yeah, we're going to have to start pulling out the concordance and all, huh. and go all in the depths huh. and cut that. We'll do that huh. maybe another day. All right? Because we just starting to get back in our sit-down mode because, you know, like I said, Satan had it to where we couldn't get down in Miami, so why not do a lesson? We don't have to worry about no nigga trying to disturb us while we out here um, reading. So let's get on um, Matthew chapter 7, verse 1 again. Huh. So we done understood that what righteousness is, we understood what righteous judgment is, and we understand that judging according to the law is a good thing. So now let's go back to Matthew 7 and 1. Let's go, all right? Matthew chapter 7, verse 1. Judge not that ye be not judged. So they read that, and they'll say that, oh, so that means you can't tell nobody. Matter of fact, nothing, you can't tell nobody anything. If they're, if they're being wicked, just let them do just let them do whatever they want. Okay, let's get the understanding of that, because we really cut that Christ said that we could judge righteous judgment. Come. So we understand we could judge now. So what is this talking about now? Let's hold, hold that. Let's get Romans the second chapter. And start from the 17th verse down to like the 29th verse. All right? All right, let me get it too so I can... Romans chapter 2. <laughs> yeah, verse 17 on down. Come. Romans chapter 2, verse 17. Behold, thou art called a Jew, and resteth in the law. And, and Marcus thy boast of the Most High. Come and make it yeah, make it thy boast of the Most High. And it says, "Art thou a Jew?" But wait, I thought this is the Book of Romans, Come. showing you that the Romans that he was talking to were Israelites living in Rome. Come. Why is he saying, "Um, behold, thou art called the Jew"? And if he's talking to the white man, the the, the Roman Caesars and all that, Come. goes to show you he was talking to Israelites, Jews that was living in Rome. Going back to Acts, the second chapter, strangers of Rome. It says that there came Jews out of all the nations, showing you that there was Jews living in Rome at that time. That's another cut to you. So you church Negroes don't even understand that. Y'all think when it says Romans, that means white people. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all think that means Caesar. You think that's talking about Julius Caesar in the book of Romans. You big, dumb, stupid, <laughs> ignorant, not studying to show yourself approved niggas, man. All right, go back to uh, back to uh, Romans. Uh. Romans chapter two, verse seventeen. Behold, thou art called a Jew, and resteth in the law, and makest thy boast of the Most High, and knoweth His will. Stop, and knoweth His will. What's the will of God? Psalms forty, verse eight. No. They come keeping the law. Go on. So where he's talking about a Jew that knows the law, come. that talk, that goes around proclaiming that he's righteous. Paul's like, oh, you you think. Righteous, huh? Well, let me ask you some questions. Go on, huh? And knows his will and, app and approves the things that are more excellent, being instructed out of the law. Being instructed out of the law. Go on. And are confident that thou self art a guide of the blind, a light of them which are in darkness. Go on. An instructor of the foolish, a teacher of babes, which have which has the form of knowledge and of the truth and the law. So we talk about the law. God who claims to be righteous. He goes around, he, he says that he's setting up judgment and whatnot. Go on now. Now therefore which teaches another, teaches thou not thyself. See? He's, he, now he's Paul. Because Paul heard certain things that was going on in the churches in Rome. So Paul was like, wait a minute, you acting all righteous and all, but what I'm hearing, mm -hmm. I'm hearing some other things going on up there, up there in the churches in Rome. Go on now. Thou therefore which teacheth another, teacheth not thyself. Come. That thou that he preaches a man should not steal, does not, does thou steal? Yeah, he's saying you telling men not to steal, the law tells you thou shalt not steal. Come. But are you yourself stealing? Meaning, Come. are you being a hypocrite? That's what he's talking about. Go on, now. That's a cut. I mean, <laughs> verse 22. 
Thou art that says a man should not commit adultery. Does not the scripture say thou shalt not commit adultery? Do, does not thou commit adultery? Go on. Thou that abhors, abhors idols, does, does thou commit a sacrilege? sacrilege? Come. Verse 23. Thou that makest thy boast of the law <laughs> through the breaking... Do the breaking the law dishonors thou God? Yeah, because th there was so much men that was claiming that there was so much teachers of the law, these Jews that was living in Rome. But Paul was like, I'm hearing you guys is doing like a whole bunch of nonsense. You telling men not to steal, but I ain't there guys up there stealing? Um, you telling men not to commit adultery, but ain't ain't y'all up there committing adultery? You supposed to be teachers of the law. Basically, you're not supposed to be a hypocrite with this thing. That's what that's going into. That's all because point. when you judge somebody, you yourself better not be doing what you're correcting that person. Uh, uh, I can't go up to a man who's smoking a pack of cigarettes of Newport, and if I just finish smoking a Newport, I can't tell him, you know you can't smoke no damn Newport uh, when I myself is smoking a Newport. That's hypocrite. Huh? I can't tell this guy you cannot be, um, you cannot sleep with your, um, with your best friend's wife if I myself is sleeping with another man's wife. That's hypocrite. That's a hypocrite. Uh, that's why he's saying, you, you said not to commit adultery, does that I'll commit adultery or if it was not just that Jew that he was talking to maybe with some of the Jews that was in the congregation ain't, ain't y'all committing adultery Come on. and there was a lot of nonsense going on because when you go to the book of Corinthians um in uh, the book of first Corinthians it tells you how certain men was given their um their father they were sleeping with their father's wives and Paul was like wait a minute I'm hearing that y'all y'all allowing that, but that, what does the law say Come. and then Paul further goes on to say how could we be saints does not did you go to the law before the unjust but not before the saints you you're not even doing what the Lord said to do so we're judging us as Israelites the saints of God we're supposed to be judging one another according to this and be doing it non hypocritical man. Come. we're not supposed to be hypocrites with it like we're not supposed to be telling people to stop eating pork when I just finished having a freaking BLT with bacon with 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 swine bacon on it. Come, come. Okay, you you can't. I can't tell a man, um, thou shalt not kill if I'm out there killing men. Oh, you know, thou shalt not murder. But then, I, I, like when I get off uh, of the camp, I'm freaking gangbang. No, I'm not saying I do. I'm just using it as an example for you dumb niggas out there. Come. All right, we're just using as we're just Come. using examples as we're going along. You can't be telling people what to do if you yourself is doing it. That's what this is talking about. This doesn't mean let a man do whatever he wants. Like if you saw a man being a damn faggot, oh, just let him be a faggot. No, if you're a man of the Lord, you're supposed to say stop being a homosexual because the Christ Christ is gonna kill you you for doing that man and if you don't stop yet yeah, you won't burn up basically not basically you will burn up that's simple all right so go on now romans chapter 3 verse 24 no i mean, I mean romans, uh, two, uh, two and then start from uh yeah start from 24 again. yeah yeah for the name for the name of the most high is, is blaspheme among the gentiles through you as it is written go on for circumcision verily profitive if thou keepeth keep the law, go on. Right? But if thou be a breaker of the of the law, that circumcision is made uncircumcised. So going to show you some of the uncircumcised in the New Testament, or some Gentiles in the New Testament, were Israelites that were not keeping the law. Because like going back when you go back to was it Paul? I mean John. Um, during the time of John, I believe it's in the book of Matthews, John said that, look, don't, don't say just because you're the seed of Abraham, because the Most High can raise up stones uh, and, and, um, um, to be the sons of Abraham. He said, what do you have to do? Your works, you, the, do works meet for the kingdom of heaven. You can walk around and talk about you a Jew all day. I used to know a nigga that used to teach with us down here, and he was... He was like a, a couple shades darker than his brother right here. From a dumb, rebellious, dumb, stupid Benjamite down there from the islands. And be, he, he, this Benjamite always wanted to freak all these women come in, all type of dogs. I think he slept with one guy, um, a woman um, in uh, Tazadakia's camp. He committed adultery with her, all type of bullshit. He was, he was a wilding out nigga. Basically, he, he used to have the attitude, oh, I'm an Israelite. I know I'm going to the kingdom of heaven. Where's that nigga? I haven't seen that nigga more than six years, man. Six years went by, I haven't seen that guy yet, man. And you know why? Because he he's off, man. Come. I heard that he tried to join We Got Next, and when I heard some of the guys from We Got Next say that he was with We Got Next, they said that they, they don't they haven't even heard from him. So he back in the world just do because he had that mentality. I'm just an Israelite. I know I'm gonna make it. No, just because you wake up to you being an Israelite, that doesn't mean the oh I'm an Israelite. I, I, I can still go back to doing no. When you wake up to your nationality, this is a lifestyle, man. 
This is your nation. This is a heritage on to you. This is something that you have to do. You see, uh, uh, the brother here, he can't grow a beard. He's, he, the hair, he go, you see, I'm trying to grow my beard. Come. Even though we got jobs and stuff and, you know, they, they really want you to build, we still try our best. Come. Right? And if they told us to cut, hey, that's when grace comes in, man. But at least we're not doing it. We're not breaking the law to where we're doing it deliberately. Like, oh, yeah, I, I, you know, I ain't got to keep the law no more. No. That's when grace comes in. Come.